The Bible says that the people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. That is my story, or that's the story of Jesus Christ in my life. My name is Yasser. I was born in the northern part of Sudan in a very fanatic Muslim family. I have never seen a Bible in my life. I have never talked to Christians. I have never entered the church. And yet Jesus Christ met me. I was filled with hatred against Jews, against Christians. And yet Jesus Christ met me and changed my life. I never was seeking Jesus. I never knew who Jesus Christ is or was. And nevertheless, Jesus Christ met me and changed my life. Today I would like to share with you the te my testimony. And today I would like to share with you not my story, but the story of Jesus Christ in my life. The story how God touched my heart and changed me and pulled me out of darkness to his light. Pulled me out of, of, of the re religious life that I had to his saving knowledge in Jesus Christ. I was born in a Muslim family. I was learned from as a child um, to practice Islam, to pray, to fast. And when I was very uh, young, my father took me to a Quran school. I was only eight years old. I didn't know where he wanted to bring me. So he brought me to a Quran school in the middle of the desert of northern Sudan and left me there to memorize the Quran. I never knew if he would ever come back. In these two years memorizing the Quran, I learned two important things. The Imam or the Shaykh in the Madrasa, he told me, you no longer belong to your family. Even though I come from a very big family, but he said to us, no, you don't belong to your small family, but you belong to the Islamic Ummah. The word Ummah comes from the Arabic word Umm, when Umm means mother. So in the Quran school, I, have, I discovered my identity in the Islamic society, and this is what gave me security. And the second thing that I learned at the Quran school is faith to believe in Allah. Without Allah and without Muhammad, you are nobody. And these two things really um, brought me up, really defined me and gave me my identity. I came back from the Quran school as a new person with lots of hatred in my heart, especially among, especially with, with lots of hatred in my heart, especially against those from Southern Sudan. We used to fight them, we used to hate them because they are Southern Sudanese and because they are Christians. As a child, I dreamt of going to Southern Sudan and fight against the unbelievers of the Southern Sudan. Even though I have never had any relationship with them, but still I hated them. Yeah, you heard me right. I hated people even though I did not know. I hated people even though I never visited them in their homes. But I had a deep hatred in my heart to go and fight against them. Sadly, there are more than two million people got killed in southern Sudan because of this hatred, because, because of a similar hatred which was in my heart. And I was going to go there and fight, but God in His mercy met me and changed my life. And that's why I did not go to southern Sudan as a jihadi to fight, but I went later on as a missionary, a person who speak about Jesus Christ. So when I was at the high school, before I went to university, before I, went to the, before, I went to, uh, before I went into the jihad in southern Sudan, came somebody in our high school and sat next to me. And this person, he was a southern Sudanese, his name is Zechariah. I used to hate him for two reasons. One, because he was a Christian, and second, because he came from southern Sudan. Even though he was the smartest person at the school, even though he was the nicest person in our class, and that time I could not help it to understand how can an unbeliever 
be so nice and be so intelligent. I used to believe that God will bring all of the Jews and the Christians into hell. And if you want to make hell like kind of um, uh, more fire, he will throw those unbelievers like firewood. So I used to pity Christians said, well, you know, this guy, he, when he dies, he will go to hell 100% because he's a Christian. But not only that, one day I said to my friends, we need to kill this Zechariah because he's a Christian. And we attacked him in one dark night and we beat him so badly. And we left him in the wood between life and death. And Zechariah never came back to school. And that time I thought that was the right thing that I did for Zechariah. I still hear him screaming under that tree. And I still see his agony on that night. But I was merciless with him, like the other brothers too. I came back to school, I was proud of myself. I was proud that I almost killed a non-Muslim. Till one day something happened in our family which changed my life. And that was the story of my uncle, who was also a fanatic Muslim, who also persecuted Christians. And one day Jesus Christ met him and changed his life. And when my uncle became a Christian, I was so upset. And I thought he will go to hell. He is going into the wrong direction. And I wanted to help him. And to help him to understand what Christianity is and to understand what Islam is. But he knew that more than I. And that's why I thought I have to look and to answer the question who Jesus Christ really is so that I can help my uncle to come to Islam. I had a bad motive. My motivation was totally bad, but for Jesus Christ that does not matter. Even though I tried to prove him wrong, he was seeking me. Even though I rejected him, he was seeking me. Even though I hated those who are following him, he was seeking me and he found me, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus Christ. He found me in an evening. I was at the hospital, accompanied the son of my uncle, my cousin. He was deadly sick and the doctor said he's going to die and he has no chance to live. I sat every day next to his bed and I hoped that Allah will do a miracle. Nothing happened. Till one day came two Coptic Christians. Christians that I used to hate. They came in and I asked them, why did you come here? And one of them, he said to me, we came because we heard that this child is sick and we came and would like to pray for him. I was so ignorant. I did not know that Christians pray. And I did not know even that Christians believe in God. And only out of politeness, I told them, well, you can pray and then go. I don't want to see you. I was sure that the prayer of those unbelievers, the prayer of those infidel Christians is not going to do anything. And then I started to watch them. How do they pray? In a certain direction? Do they wash themselves? Do they say some words? How do they pray? And I was very surprised. Those two young men, they, sat this, they stood there next to the bed of this child who was not able to speak for four weeks. And then they start to pray, a prayer that moved me from within for two reasons. First of all, they prayed with compassion. They prayed to God and they spoke to God as if they know him, as if they were speaking to him as if a friend is speaking to his friend. I said, who are those people who address God this way? And the, second, and the second thing that touched my heart, that they prayed was love. I hated them, but they loved us. They loved this child. And they prayed in the name of Jesus Christ. And the minute they concluded their prayer, and they said, Amen. This child opened his eyes for the first time in four weeks. And on that moment, Jesus Christ opened my eyes too and opened my heart to him. Hallelujah. 
And one of those two friends stood um, next to me and he started to speak to me about Jesus. He said to me, Jesus never showed the way to God. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. He said to me, like you have been born separate from God because we are sinners through the sin of Adam and Eve. And every person is being born in this sinful nature, is being born automatically separated from God. Then I asked myself, said, well, what is the solution? And then he said to me, the solution is being prepared by God himself. That God became man in Jesus Christ. And that God became in Jesus Christ the perfect sacrifice for us. As a Muslim, I used to celebrate Eid al-Adha, which is called like where we slaughter a sheep in remembrance of the story of Abraham and his son. And this, and this fellow Christians told me, Jesus Christ is this perfect Lamb of God who died in your place or in my place. They shared with me about the love of God. They said to me, God loves you. And I asked them why. And I thought maybe they will tell me because you are religious, because you come from a good family, because you don't do bad deeds. I said, no, God loves you because he created you in his image. And because God is love, he cannot be anything else than love. We spoke almost the whole night. And as the morning came up, this fellow Christian asked me, do you believe that Jesus Christ is alive? I said to him, yes. And he said to me, if you believe he's alive, you can talk to him. And that was the day when I opened my heart to Jesus. And I said, Jesus, if you are the one that this person speak about you, please come into my life and change me. On that moment, I did not understand much about Jesus. But if I look back today, it is God who touched my heart. It's the Holy Spirit that moved me through Jesus Christ to say yes to Jesus because Jesus said yes to me. And I hope that wherever you are, you can say yes to Jesus because God loves you. Loves you in a way that you will never imagine. This decision changed my life spiritually, but also in the society. I was rejected. I had to leave home. I was imprisoned. I was persecuted. But in all of this, Jesus had been always with me. Because he said, I will be always with you till the end of time. And one day I was in Egypt in a conference and there I met a Sudanese pastor who came to me and he started to speak to me. And he asked me, where do you come from? And I told him where I was born and where I came from. And this Sudanese pastor started to cry. And I asked him, why are you crying? And he looked at me and he said, do you remember me? I said to him, no, I have never seen you. And he looked me again into the eye and he said to me, my name is Zachariah. Zechariah, the one that I almost killed one day. I met him after all these years. And the minute he said his name, I saw his broken arm. I saw the injuries that I did for him. I felt shame. And then I thought this Zechariah is going to be rude to me. I thought he's going to be um, upset about me. I thought he's going to remind me of my past. But no, he did something totally different. He said to me, yes, sir, because you hated me so much, I was always praying for you. I'm sharing my testimony today, not because I was seeking God, but because Jesus was seeking me. I'm sharing my testimony today not because I'm a good person, because, but because of someone like Zechariah who prayed for me. I hated him, he prayed for me. I persecuted him, he prayed for me. To hate those who hate you actually is not very difficult. 
but to love those who hate you. For that, you need someone whose name is Jesus.